Six, what you got to say? Yo, you're watching Hard Knock TV. Yeah. With Nick Huff. Nick. But really. But but really, though. <laughs> but really, but really, <laughs> though. Yo, you watching fucking Hard Knock. You know why they call it Hard Knock? I have no idea. <laughs> but you're watching it right fucking now. And you're like, this is why I hate logic. <laughs> But I'm still watching his shit, though. All right, so this is the part of the interview where we go deep into the creative process. Yes. I know Bohemian is the first song on the soundtrack, but it was one of the last tracks that you guys recorded. Yeah, first song, but last song we recorded, one of the last songs. So basically, you know, a couple of days in the studio, uh, we wanted to start something new just to add it to the, to the album and um, had these, the pads you first hear. Oh, you didn't start with guitar first? On the song, actually on the way there in my head, I was like, oh, I have this guitar idea. But then I wanted to hear it with the pads first. Oh, so you had the gorilla's idea? Yeah. Oh, then you must have done it. And I was like, that sounds like Yeah, yeah. This is how shit gets mixed up. Where yeah. I'm thinking, oh, man, I was like, yeah, so like, gorillas. Yeah, I, I think I was just like me and Bobby in the studio. And then I just like played the pads. I knew like the guitar itself <laughs> is cool. But with the pads, it's like, it brings it more like. More modern. More modern. So with that together, you know, you had the. Originally, I was like, how crazy would it be if I did a cover and I wanted to do Day and Night? A day and night, a lonely stone that seems to freeze my night. Yep. day and night. And he was like, nah, fuck that. He's like, the melody should. was crazy. Yeah, he was like, melody's so different because it's not the same melody. Right. He was like, you should do that. So I was like, all right, every night. And then I started thinking about weed because of the lonely loner, lonely stoner, lonely, and I was like, oh. And then that's how yeah. it inspired just the vibe, but has nothing to do with melody or flow or anything like that, which is a really awesome way. Um, like, I don't think anybody would really see that connection there. You know, it's so different, um, but it's cool to let people know that the most like obtuse or obstruct uh, inspiration that sounds nothing like something else can create something brand new. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. And we do what we always do with the epic switch ups. Right, I was about to get that. There's like three switch ups. Yeah. Like at what point do you guys decide, okay, this is the vibe and now we're gonna switch up the... Well, the I think that actually happened like kind of naturally because we wanted to just build up the hook. So we had our, our boy Kev Randolph um, just play like a bunch of synths and stuff over like the last hook. Yeah. And But then we like soloed what he did and it was like this crazy, like almost like house dance. Yeah. And then Cootie came yeah. in with the crazy break, the drummer, he's so sick. Yeah. And when he did that, poof, poof, tuck -a -tuck -a -poof, yeah. almost like drum and bass, mm -hmm. that was next That level. took it to another like genre on its own and then we just put the hook on that and we're like, oh, it's crazy. And then we're like, where can we take this now even further? Yeah. And so we had all the boys in the studio doing that big choir, which Go straight into that. Oh, no, no. Yeah, and then John Lindahl, too. Yeah. And we, uh, it was originally going to be called Satellite, and then I made a joke mm -hmm. <laughs> and was like, this is Bohemian Trapsody. There's so many switch-ups. It's like seven minutes. It's crazy. <laughs> and then Bobby saved it as that, and then we just was like, fuck it, let's keep yeah, it. Fuck it. That's a question that I saw the fans ask. So like, were you influenced by Queen somehow? Like, why did no, you choose to? No, not at all. It was just funny. I think just the ode to, like, the long song and the switch-ups and yeah. stuff like that, you know? Yeah. That's my favorite part in that movie, too, by the way. When oh, the yeah. It's like... Seven minute songs, that's so long. <laughs> it's never going to happen. And then they're at the uh, the event, mm -hmm. uh, what's it called? Live the Aid? Live Aid, yeah. And then they, they cut to that guy for yeah, one second. That's a like, great, yeah. great scene. And yeah. it's uh, Mike, Mike Myers. Myers. Yeah. So sick. You know he was in Inglorious Bastards too? Yeah. Mike Myers was? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. The Bastards. Before, for other projects, like you pretty much like have a beat, you go marinate. This yeah. seems like it's much more of in the moment collaborating back and forth. Is 100%. It, is it all just like studio session vibes or it's just like you just kind of like building elements as you go along or w w how is the, the process different? Yeah, I mean, ex exactly. Like it was cool too having Cootie and our boy Tomo who was there as well. Yeah. And a bunch of just incredible musicians, you know, so we were all just kind of like jamming. Having fun. And just having fun. And then... Mike Posner was piecing it together. Up. Yeah, Mike Posner was there. So it was just yeah. a vibe. It was just like Judo. awesome. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Judo, Judo who yeah, killed yeah, it on the record, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, he killed it. But yeah, I think also a lot of the songs started just like me and piano or mm -hmm. Six coming over, like, hey, I had this riff I recorded on my phone. And then we would take that and then he would kind of show me how to transpose it to piano. And then I would like could spend six months writing a song, like Time Machine or, mm -hmm. you know, something like that, which is cool. In terms of lyrics, because you are saying less words that have more space. 
yeah. to, to be interpreted, whatever. How is that different from you as an artist? Because you are a wordsmith that's like very particular about like <coughs> making sure that you're painting these pictures. Now you're using less words to paint those pictures. Yeah. What's that like on, on a creative process? Do you have to like let go of wanting to fill up the space or? For me, it's better because I like to be more abstract. I've always wished that I could do that. I think probably my most abstract song lyrically in raps is like Fade Away because I'm talking mm -hmm. about the future and silver screen and movies and, you know, excuse me, interstellar travel and all this stuff. That makes sense because the end result is just a song about accepting that death is a reality and that things can happen. But with this song, it's like, what is it really about? Because, you know, I could say it's love or I could say it's weed or just like Chris Martin, you could decide what it is, no. you know? And that's kind of the always been the weird like juxtaposition of like a, a rap genius, for example, of like telling everybody exactly what it is. But maybe sometimes you you don't want to tell a song or, or, or tell the uh, meaning behind a song what it is. But then you have people who don't have no idea that can still go and tell other people. So I'm not shitting on Rap Genius. I'm just saying that sometimes it's better left unsaid and right. just left to uh, people's interpretation. And you brought up Chris Martin. We've talked about this before yeah. from, from when I got a chance to interview him. He told me that sometimes he didn't know what the lyrics meant. He's like, yeah. sometimes the lyrics just come out through me when I'm creating. Same. He's like... A, a week, two weeks later, a year later, he's like, oh, that's what it meant to me at this point, which might be different what it meant to me when I wrote it. So I, I, that's why I want to talk to you about it. But that's art. That yeah. is art. That's like real Yellow, art. that song? Yeah, what? Yeah. Doesn't mean anything. Like just saw yellow? like a yellow book or something I yeah. read. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So people can interpret it however they want. And, and that's what I love about this project. It's, it's, it's mood music to me. Like... It's something like you played it during your barbecue here, and it just like it just fit, just like a bunch of people just hanging out, <laughs> vibing, and having conversations, yeah. vibing on afternoon. Like it wasn't like something where I was like, I can sit to it and I can listen and I could try to figure out like the different things and you how just to enjoy the novel, it. or you just sit back and just be like, oh, this is the mood I want to feel right now. Yeah, um, pretty cool. Is there anything else from Bohemian uh, Trap City that we miss in terms of uh, creative process or? Man, it was that was just one of the funnest songs I think to make. Yeah. Cause it, honestly, we didn't know what we we're doing with it. You know, he that vocal, that main vocal you did was kind of just like that reference was turned into the kind of yeah. the hook of the song. You know, it was and really kind of just built it from there. But it was just super fun. Like I got to play live bass on there too, and you know the switch ups I always love, and I got to showcase the, like the trap side at the end. You know, with the 808s, and so it's it like yeah, familiar side it. of it too, <laughs> with also the newness and the intro. So I love that record for sure. I mean, some fans might not even know you started with guitar before you were making beats. Yeah, right? yeah, so I was playing like, guitar forever. What does it feel like to like actually like make that a big part of your sound for, for this project? It's full circle. Like it's awesome. Like when we first met, I was just kind of put the guitar down and just wanted to lock in on mastering like how to make beats. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you know, I kind of mastered it in a sense where i felt like i wanted to do something different so it was like the perfect time time yeah it was the perfect time for us to do this for like me creatively just to be able to come back to like my my youth and mm -hmm. show people like how how i got into music i feel the same way yeah i mean you use your voice singing wise as an instrument throughout this yeah uh, project too i saw a lot of fans were like how do you teach yourself how to sing like what's that process like transforming is that like do you have to go through like more vocal exercises to be able to sing or uh that... yeah it's definitely a lot of like like damien helped me and rk mm -hmm. helped me and then like singing bad in front of your friends and having to have the courage to be able to like not know how to hit a key how to project and how to use your diaphragm it's like a it's a scary thing but that's what also makes it so great it's like overcoming that fear and it's like even if I'm live and I sing and I, I don't hit a key right or a note perfectly, like I'm human. So what? You know what I mean? Those early stages where you don't feel like you sound right or whatever, how do you not let that deter you? Because I've, I've seen a lot of people, yeah, I've tried it. You pick up an instrument, you try different things. You're like, man, I don't know if I can do this. But then it's like you have to make it through that initial hurdle of like, to oh, me, I'm it's time. Yeah. It's just time. It's got time. That work. Yeah, because yeah, every day. <laughs> I was closer to the key, you know, or I was closer to uh, memorizing the notes on the piano. I was closer to it. I do believe that I've been blessed because of our profession that I, there is a bit of, it's like innate, like it's in me. So I pick up a little faster, which also gives me a little more confidence. But singing is also, I had to find my range, you know. 
Like there's certain songs where I could probably hit a note cr really good in the studio and not just because it's like, you know, a little bit of tune here or there. I mean, some songs don't have tune, some do, some it's just a little bit on there just to, you know, make it sound good. Um, but for me, it's like, you just gotta have fun, man. You can't overthink it. Mm -hmm. Just do it, learn, grow. And I'm excited for it, whether it's alternative or whatever, like other albums that we do in this vein in the future. Because without Supermarket, we have no point of reference to be able to look back and see how far we've come. Yeah. Are there other genres that you see your, yourself kind of like diving into the way that you guys did with the novel that you're excited, whether it be jazz or R&B or like whatever it is? Yeah, for sure. I think so. Like, I don't, I don't see us like ever, you know, stopping from trying to do something different, you know? There's so many, so much good music out there to make, so. It's just a natural progression. Yeah, like, it's like we'll we wake up feel one it. day and we'll know. feel it. Yeah, we kind of go through just like kind of phases too of like music we listen to. So sometimes like that influences what we play and stuff. So you never know. It's it's honestly day by day. Like how are you feeling that day and see where we can go from there. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sure we're not going to, you know, just do one thing for sure. Can we see some of the stuff you guys are experimenting in this in, in the next album? Or is this like something you guys wanted to con contain to the novel <clears throat> soundtrack? Well, definitely. I would yeah. love to even talk about incorporating it into future projects. There's one record I'm thinking of in my head, particularly where it, it's we've taken the guitar element and brought it over. Which one? The one I'm thinking about? We think about the, the same one with the with, switch up at the end with Homeboy on it. Yeah. Well, I mean no. the sample. Yes. The vocal sample. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that. There's there's in the short form. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, slightly is. on the next <laughs> album, but not that much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's funny because the song comes after another song about being different and not being scared to do things differently and mm -hmm. open up, and then you have this song on that album which is like different but it's crazy because there was still a point where i was like i don't know like we did that song it's so people are like what song what are you talking about <laughs> but we did that before we did these final ones on supermarket yeah and that was still at a point true. where in my head i was like not sure what was gonna happen we're still trying it. to figure it out yeah, yeah. even like yeah making because oh, we sorry. recorded yeah, just kick the shit out of you <laughs> i know we're getting into um time machine but like that's something he had on piano for a long time and we were just in the studio and he was asking like where should we go and I was like oh I'll, I've always loved Time Machine so he played that and we produced it out then too so yeah. like a lot of these songs you know we had to like find out we had to do a couple songs to find out what sounds good if that makes sense yep. and I think when we got to those last sessions we kind of like dialed it in yeah. where we knew what kind of stuff he sounded good on you know so it was cool agreed well you brought up Time Machine yeah uh, do you Which, that's my favorite one of my favorites. Favorite song on, on yeah, the, the soundtrack? Yeah, I love Why? it. Why? What makes uh, you favorite? I mean, the writing is sick. Shoegazer. Yeah, and I love the bass drop where it's just like the... It's just so simple, but it's like some straight shoegazing music, which is like the indie you're rock, like, and like smashing pumpkins, so... Yeah. That's my, that's my jam. I love it. I don't know why, I just love it. That song is about... Uh, so I actually reference in the book H.G. Wells' Time Machine. And um, the movie, which was uh, adapted, well, there's the original, and then there's the other one that they did with um, Guy Pierce, yes, my guy. Movie. Love that movie. So he did a uh, time machine, and basically, long story short, it's about this inventor who's working on a time machine. He's going to ask this woman to be his wife. She dies. He doesn't go crazy, but he like finishes the time machine, goes back in time to save her, but she dies again, and then he goes back again, and every it's just fate. Mm -hmm. He can't save her. So to me, that's what that song's about. Wow. Yeah. You know, I've seen you die a thousand times, um, but I know um, I'm going to save you this time. And then my favorite lyric is, I'll meet you in the clouds if I don't this time, yeah. because he's going to take his life, because he can't live without this person, which is extremely sad and fucked up, but also very poetic at the same time, which is how I felt the character felt until he actually went forward in time so much so I think it was like 800,000 years or something and then found love there which is also very pretty and it's also just like a coming <clears throat> to terms with fate like you can't always I think a lot of times we think that we can control mm -hmm. what things are happening it's like sometimes just stuff you happens can't. you gotta let it go you gotta let it go let it go <laughs> frozen <laughs> <laughs> remix bars um, and then at what point because you said he had original you created Time Machine on your piano yeah and then we played it in the studio mm -hmm. And I don't know, it wasn't me. Somebody was like, yo, like, how Yeah, we be. tried, like, so originally, um, the intro of that song is a different tempo than the second half. So we tried to do a switch up, but it was too slow. I remember that for sure. 
and then we bumped it up maybe like 10 BPM. And it kind of just worked with like, I was just, I remember just playing that line. You were like, oh, that's it. Yeah. And that's literally what the rest of the song is. It's just that plus some, some ambient guitar stuff that Tomo did. And additional vocals. And additional vocals and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it, it rocks too. You know, it gets to that, you know, chorus with the open hi hat. Yeah. yeah. And That'll be a fun one to do on tour. Yeah. That's a, it's, I think it just felt good. It wasn't anything too complicated about it. We just, I agree. It just, we just went for it. Can we get a little acoustic version of that? Let's do it. Yeah. I built a time machine for you But you always die no matter what I do Every time I go back I always seem to fail And the angel of death always prevails Your face everywhere I go. I watch your blood melt through the snow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And on and on and on and on and on. Sick. It's the first <laughs> time we ever did that. Yeah, that was all. <laughs> freestyle right there now yeah. they know we're turning this into unplugged so Let's go. Go. i know i feel like uh <laughs> yeah well yeah. i feel Hard like uh, unplugged bro yeah. let's go j cole losing yeah. my balance right now yeah. damn Classic. throwback that's my favorite j cole song ever i know that's why i said it babe mm -hmm. <laughs> um yo that was dope i felt good I, I mean i know it's a very vulnerable space you know you as a musician and you like just spontaneously singing without even warming up or like doing anything it's fun uh though it's like it's music man yeah it makes me excited it's like it's, it's yeah another cool thing is we've also been finding my key because you know what I was is, like, to, to like a, a novice what does it mean to find your key okay so you know there's a scale on the on the piano a b c d e f g um h no i'm kidding and sometimes why i'm an idiot i don't know what the fuck i'm saying <laughs> like supermarket for example like that riff is in a key that he likes. Yeah, and so is this. But then we so really found it. Yeah. What is that? Like G sharp minor. This or is like or, uh, or G, might be G F yeah. or something. G. Yeah. But in a in a way where I can still sing high, but it's it just it's like the right pocket. Like here's where I can sing. Okay. Now here's where like Adele can sing. <laughs> she can sing anywhere <laughs> yeah. she wants. This is where my sweet spot is. And so there's some of the songs that we had done early. Um, utilizing a little bit more of the auto tune because I wasn't so good in that key, but that was just me not really understanding that, and excuse me, also not wanting to stop a vibe because I'm like, oh, something isn't right here. So that's when I would, you know, kind of use the. Auto -tune. I mean, I kind of agree with you, but also would say like that might be kind of in your head too because there's other songs on the album that aren't in that key, like DeLorean and stuff, where you sound fucking good on that too, you know. Eh. I, th I think so. <laughs> I don't know. Not but, to get super yeah. technical on that, but when you say you weren't good at that moment, does that just come with strengthening your vocals? Or like, how do you get to be good at hitting a certain key? I mean, practice. But I personally believe that I just sound good in a certain key. So you know? certain humans have certain ranges. I suppose, Indeed. man, it's off frequency and energy, <laughs> man. You didn't talk it, man. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's something about that that's just like I can, I can go here. Play some other totally random shit in that key right now. Let's go freestyle. A little faster. And she says, I don't know you anymore. And she says, I don't know this man that you become my. I can't be with you no more She says, I don't know this man I don't know you But I love you still, I, I still I do So it's a little shaky, but that's freestyle So it's like, th that, I could just go into that and then get better Understand what, uh, what would you call him when you like hold a note? Uh fuck is that? I see, know. I don't know what the fuck I'm We don't know. see, we, we just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. vibe, it's just bro. It's instinctual. It's a feeling, yeah. Because neither yeah. of you went to, like, actual sustained school. Sustained note. Hey, we gotta remember like... that, though. Yeah, a sustained note. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would then need to know, because even, 
in a note, there's octaves. So it's like on uh, Can I Kick It, like I hit that crazy high octave. Yeah. I was just fucking around. Like yeah. I was like, I think my falsetto sounds like shit personally. No, but sometimes when so I do it, people are like, oh, that's tight. It's but I'm like, fire. I don't know. Uh, what's the key? Can you play it? See, that's in a different key. That's what I'm saying. Like, <clears throat> and this is uh, so judo came with this fire. Part. Oh yeah, judo snapped. I'll play as close as I can. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful girl. Don't you walk out my world? Anything that I would do for you, girl. It compiles my world. Now tell me that you're satisfied. <laughs> you just gotta hit it right. Yeah, you hit it. But it's fun. Like she's. I would never do that. Like, if, if I was on a rap song, like, why the fuck would I be like, hey, yeah, girl? Like, what? Like, yeah. So it's fun to just, but then what's to say this isn't rap? Because then you add the drums. But then it's like, what's to say what genre is? You know, if, if, if it's almost like some tribe. Like, I mean, obviously, yeah. like, can yeah. I kick it? But, yeah. you know, because they used to sample um, guitar, jazz guitars, and those are just jazz chords, you know? What makes something a jazz chord? Like the. It's super technical, like yeah. the 13th like on top, and like the, the just like different vocals. And ghost like, notes? The ghost, uh, yeah. So if we do indie rock, like that would be like more major, right? But then the, the that's the jazz version of it, you know what so, I mean? And then there's yeah. Spanish guitar. Yeah, and then the, you know, all the, yeah. yeah, so many different variations of Yeah, we're this. out here to do a little, yeah. you know. A little theory. This is pretty fun theory. right now. Yeah, Yo, um, do you know Supermarket? Yeah. Play cool. it. I right. know, uh, fuck you, Nick. He's like, wait, wait, we got shit to talk about. There's Just actually, I want to send you a dope picture I have where I played you, I'm playing you the voice memo. Of it? Of the idea. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's sick. Wait, hold on. I'll I think I'm playing fun. Nick's like, goddamn. No, 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 play it all. And then we'll, because I, I want to talk, we'll talk about Kevin Kick. We'll talk about Super Mario, but we're going to buy it. Let's catch some vibe. Let's have fun. Here we go. Where is my I give you the world. Yeah, that's one of those ones where I'm not singing that shit. Because <laughs> then I got it. I'd have to learn that one. What is this? Oh yeah. I guess along. Yeah, I don't like this. Movie. I don't know why I did that. Yeah. But that's a prime example of like one I, I, I wouldn't like. What about By the Bridge? How's that going? Oh, this is my, one of my favorites too. <clears throat> so like a lot of these are just like simple like chord you first learn, you know? From like Bob Dylan. We did this on tour. How I does think. it start? Hey? Hey there, are you listening? I just found a dead man by the bridge again. By the bridge again. By the bridge again. By the bridge again. Fuck is next. Why is Isn't anybody, anybody listening? <laughs> this world is so beautiful. But then again. But then again. It seems like everywhere I go, I'm searching for something inside my soul. Up. So that's another one I would prefer the key to that. <clears throat> yeah. I still don't know the lyrics. <laughs> it, now, speaking of that, when he's strumming some of these songs, and like when you're like going in, do you find that pocket first? Like when you're like, you're kind of like mumbling around until you find that, or are you actually at the same time writing lyrics um, that come to mind? Yeah, they like freestyle like what we did before. Here, do another one. Anything. In, from from in, the album? In, in a good key. No, oh, just okay. something, something fresh. Uh... Like you get it. Yeah. Are you sure? Okay, here we go. It's all chords. Uh, what like, should I talk about? Give me a subject. Something fun. Something fun. Uh, the beach. Okay. <clears throat> Driving down to 101 for you. Driving down to 101 just me plus you down to Malibu. Gonna hit the Soho house in Malibu. Hey. Uh, you're my baby. 
you're my, you're my Malibu, hey, my Malibu. <laughs> Driving down a 101 just for you. I'm trying to fuck you tonight, girl. Take off your clothes. <laughs> I'm trying to fuck you tonight. I'm just playing, I suppose, but I'm really. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, so like, I would, whatever. But I come up with the melody, it's just a... Instant. Yeah, bro. It's, it's so usually fun. the first thing, like, that comes to your mind. Sometimes you want to, like, second guess it, but mm -hmm. often it's, like, the first thing that comes to your mind is the most yeah. heat, you know? Yeah, especially with melodies. Because you just got to trust your gut. Because you know, the so. melody's usually always really good. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, so that's, um, that's what I was saying. The melody's usually, like, the, like... You said that's the gut, you just trust it. And then the lyrics you can kind of put in. So mm -hmm. it's like that, obviously, I wouldn't talk about fucking her. Or I might. <laughs> Cause, Cause it's funny, you know what I mean? Like, but. Do you cry, baby bitch? I'm a fucking yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, straight up. <laughs> um, but to me, actually, that's a kind of fucking cool idea. We What's should that? do that. We should lay that today. What, this, this little idea? Yeah, and yeah. put like uh, ocean and fucking seagulls in the back. Yeah. yeah. We're literally Maybe making music. What did I say? In I don't the middle know. of an interview right now. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Like, that's what I want. Like, I want people to get the feeling of what creation is like. But also look at it. We're not on our phones, we're not on fucking blogs, right. we're not reading what people are saying, we're not doing this. There's a million people who could be watching this and they're like, oh, the way Six talks, he's fucking <laughs> this, or you know, Bobby's that, or but all this shit. Yeah. Like we throw all of that out the window and we go, what makes us happy, man? Right. What's fun, what's different, what can we do? And look, and this is what it is times a million when the camera's not even here. And you know what it's like being in the studio with right. us. It's all the homies, we smoking some dope, we drinking some scotch, we hanging out, we're just vibing, and it's even more, like, just fun. And I'll go in there, I'll, he'll go in, lay that guitar, snap, kill it, and then maybe we don't do shit for six hours because we're just having a blast. Mm -hmm. or fucking, they're watching basketball because I can't stand it. <laughs> and then I go in. That's a whole nother conversation. I know, it gets ball talk, like shit. <laughs> and then, uh, and then... <laughs> I'll go in and be like, oh, I want to do the melody. But most of the time, he'll do it, and then I go mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah, it's just like that. How much do you have to tune out uh, that voice in your head that says, you know, that, that stops you from fully being free in the studio? Because, like, you just did some stuff. Like, you didn't know how it was going to go. It could sound whack. It sound good. Like, you, But you have to, to fully be able to connect. You have to let some of that go. Not to talk. I hate it because I don't want to interrupt you. But for me, there is never a voice. The voice is typically after it's been created. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this is so different. And then mm -hmm. Six is like, different? I'm not seeing a problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? yeah. So. But also, I think it's like who you surround yourself with, too. Right? Yeah. Because all of us, everyone like that we, we fuck with, they're all open-minded. They're all like, right. you know, listen to all types of music, you know, whatever. My brother used to tell me, like, important. singing was whack. Yeah. You yeah. Can't and he, he didn't mean, like I mean, now he, I know he feels a lot different about it. Um, but he used to tell me, like, shit was whack. Like, we can't be singing. Um, and then soft. Yeah, it's soft. And, and then even, you know, one of my buddies, Josh, that I first started rapping with, Mary Jo's son, I was playing guitar, bro, mm -hmm. at 15, like trying to learn guitar and sing <laughs> and had calluses on my fingers. I was playing so much. Mm -hmm. And he was like, that shit's whack. Like, you should rap. Like, you're so much better at rapping. And he was right that I was better at rapping. But it's just, I cared so much about what he said. And he was such an influence on me, like you said, about surrounding yourself with people that I was like, oh, yeah, I guess this is whack. Mm -hmm. And I don't regret it because you taught me. And, yeah. you know, I'm learning from my friends today. But I think what you said was so spot on. Yeah. You know who I had a conversation about this? It was crazy. Mm. Uh, RZA. RZA you know, said that early on in his career, when he was like trying to play the guitar and other stuff, because back then it was like your hip hop or your rock, and it was like a it was a culture, it was an attitude, it was a whole yeah, thing. Kung Fu was probably a whole different. Thing. <laughs> so like, it was like a whole different. <laughs> so he was like, "Yo, like back then people were like, oh, you're trying to play different things. Like that's not cool." Actually, RZA was one of the people who literally said it when I was a teenager, he was like, this ain't that pop, wax, singing, R&B shit. This is rap, this is hip hop. And I was like, oh, okay, word, all right, bet. Yeah, right. Rapkin in a napkin. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go and, and do my thing, so. But yeah, uh, but now it's funny, cause like, when you think of the RZA, I mean, he's like scoring shit. Yeah. Everybody goes through phases. Yeah. So. Even when I was in like high school, there's a phase, like, I'm not gonna say I've always been like that. Like, I was, I was like in straight metal bands, right? And even like in metal, there's like subgenres of metal and like harder metal than like mm -hmm. softer metal. So even back then, like when I was younger, it took me, un you know, until I got older to like appreciate everything more. Right. You know what I mean? So sometimes it does take time for, for people. Yeah. But I hope they come around to it eventually because they're missing out if they, if they don't. For sure. You know? I missed I agree. out. Like when I was growing up, 
Like I remember when uh, Under the Bridge came out, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Oh man, that's that's not hip hop. Like that's some Damn, other shit. Really? Like oh, that's like white people shit. Like whatever. <laughs> that's like, I just, like that's real. Like yeah. <laughs> and then like when now I moved to LA, <laughs> and I was just like feeling the the loneliness of the city. Like mm. that became wow. my like go to song, and I had like a, a completely different understanding. But it was because my perception of music just opened up. And I was able to embrace all these different influences, but growing up, it was like, oh, if it wasn't hip hop, like, that's just whack. That's what I hope this album does for people, too. Like, even if you just listen to all rap and then you check out this album, like, hopefully that opens up your ears right. to other stuff because there's so much good music, man. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Um, I love that you guys still, in a non hip hop album, were able to sprinkle, you know, Tribe, Biz Marquee. Like, th true. there's still, you found a, a, a way to flip it, but there's still, you know, as a hip hop fan and a hip hop fanatic, that's what fan is. Like I still was like, okay, yeah, there's there's a little nod to try, there's a little nod. Did to, I ever tell you this. about the 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 title for Can I Kick It and what happened? No. Nah. <laughs>